Well, hello, my name is Chauncey Allman. Uh, I am a national presenter with Faith Life Corporation. And as you may know, Faith Life makes Logos Bible software. And we are excited to bring you another episode of Women in the Word. So if this is your first time tuning in to Women in the Word, um, this is where uh, I have invited several women um, from across the country who love studying words God, uh, studying God's word. They are either teachers, preachers, authors, um, they lead Bible studies, and this is their platform to come and talk about their lives, um, how they study the Bible, why they study the Bible, how they got into ministry, and all those types of things. And so today, I am super excited, and I, I say that every week, um, but I am. I'm super excited to have uh, today's guest, uh, Elizabeth Woodson. And Elizabeth Woodson checks all of those boxes I just mentioned, from, from Bible teacher to speaker to author. New book just came out today. We'll get to that. Um, lives here in the Dallas area where I am. And so without further ado, as they say, hello, Elizabeth, and welcome. Hey, Chauncey, thank you for inviting me. I'm excited to be here with you today. Just excited to talk about how I say the Bible and faith and ministry and to be a part of what you're trying to do for Faith Life. That's great. And, you know, and I told you this, so I'm going to say it publicly. When I first came up with this idea and I was talking to my wife and I was like, you know, I think this would be a great idea. And she's like, yeah, it's great. But you better get Elizabeth Woodson up there. That was the <laughs> first thing she told me. And, you know, being the trying to be the good husband as I am, I said, OK, well, let's make that happen. And I said, well, you reach out to her. And she did. She reached out to you. I think it was on Facebook. And yeah. then the rest yeah. of it as they say, is history. So um, she's not watching this live right now. She'll see the recording. So um, say, hey, babe, I, I did it. We, we have Elizabeth Woodson on and we're ready. <laughs> so uh, there's so much to cover in you know about an hour or so. And I wanna uh, make sure we do the time justice to hear all about what you have going on in your books and ministry and all that. But before we get to all of that serious stuff, I want to start off, which I do for all of the women in the words, is to start off with a kind of an icebreaker question. It's either a first or a favorite. And Elizabeth does not know what I'm going to ask her. She just knows that it's going to be something that's her favorite or a first. And so I'm going to go with a favorite. And so Elizabeth, we want to know, what is your favorite all-time TV sitcom? Oh, favorite all-time TV sitcom. See, it's hard. I'm a hard person <laughs> to favorite. And so I will choose uh, a sitcom that I really like right now. Okay. And so it is Abbott Elementary. Yes. Pizza Brunson. It is so good. It's a cute show. It's funny. It's light. And it has been giving me joy. I, you know, that's funny. I love that show, too. I, I do. I'm going to tell you my favorite character. I don't know who yours is, but my favorite, okay. favorite character is the principal. <laughs> the principal cracks me Ava up. Is she's now, now, isn't the name of the school Woodson Elementary too? If no, I'm it's not. it is. Is it? I'm not sure. Okay, I was going to say, is that why you like it? Because the school is named after you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would be a good reason to like it. That would. <laughs> All right, so we know, so we know what you're going to be laughing at. You're going to be laughing at Abbott Elementary, uh, and I do too. Um, man, that that show is funny. I got to I got to give it to you. That that's a good show. All right, so now let's get into uh, some stuff that's still fun, may not be as fun as yeah. Abbott Elementary necessarily, but uh, just to kind of start off, tell, tell us if you could, what, um, what was your kind of your come to faith moment? I mean, did you come to the Lord kind of kicking and screaming or were you like a, a believer from the time you were like in kindergarten or <laughs> kind of how, how did that whole thing happen for you? Yeah, I came to faith as a kid, uh, probably was like nine years old at a VBS program. And so it was the felt boards and the puppet shows. And I like to tell people <laughs> that they work. <laughs> the kids can understand the gospel from the puppet shows. Uh, and I tell people I grew up in a Christian household, have wonderful parents. And so Jesus was what we did. Okay. And so it took me going to college and really just being placed in a position where I had to figure out my faith for myself. I couldn't piggyback on my parents' faith. And what does it mean for Elizabeth to follow Jesus? And so the 
kind of illus the image I give people is that it wasn't that it was just completely from dark to light, but it was this dimmer switch. So I believe mm. that the Lord saved me that day at the VBS program, but over years, just a light bulb came on of what it means for me to follow Jesus and really give my life to him. And I remember I had an experience my senior year of college and I got a job, the, the job I wanted, my perfect job. And the way it transpired, I realized that I had nothing to do with it, but the Lord had everything to do with it. And I think in that moment, I was really gripped with the reality of his sovereignty, the reality of what it means to live for him mm -hmm. and just say, I exist for his glory. Like that situation just really just brought my eyes all the way open to what it means to live for the Lord in his world. And so it was I me mean, just the benefit of a, a Christian heritage in my family and, and grandparents and great grandparents, but it really was just walking through life as a college kid and seeing those pieces come together uh, in my own way. Yeah, and, that, and that's awesome. And, and, you know, oftentimes when we get to college, we get exposed to some different beliefs, uh, whether or not it's, you know, getting introduced to, to Islam for the first time or, uh, you know, any of those other things. Did, do, did you kind of struggle with that? I mean, because you kind of went into college kind of believing certain things. Did Were you kind of swayed by other things that you heard um, in college or were you pretty much, you know, straight and narrow the whole time? No, I went to, I went to a Christian college. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, it was helpful. I think I was a kid who needed to be kept in some boundaries <laughs> going to a Christian college. I think it just was life is just gets hard and yeah. you choose options to deal with your stuff that aren't always the best to glorify to the Lord. And so I tell people just finding yourself in some gutters and realizing the only way I'm going to get out of this is with the Lord. Like all the stuff I'm trying to use or the people I'm in relationship, that's not helping me. Um, and so in some sense, coming to the end of myself and mm -hmm. realizing, Lord, you are the one. Uh, and so it's not always the, the best um, or um, it's not always the easiest things that sometimes open our eyes for the, who God is, mm -hmm. but it's in those really painful moments that we're able to see that who he says he is, is really true. You know, it's funny you say that I had a, a really good friend in college. And I remember, I remember this day like it was yesterday. We were sitting in the cafeteria <clears throat> and we were talking about uh, church and Christianity. And he said, you know, why is it that Christian people always, you know, have come from a struggle? You know, it's like, why, why is it always a tragedy? Yeah. You know, is that how, I mean, we weren't believers at the time. We were just kind of talking, talking things through. And it's interesting that you say that you use the term in the gutter. And that was his perception that, well, man, you know, do, do we have to go through the gutter or go in the gutter to uh, to find the Lord? And, and as you said, that's that's some people's story. And it's a lot of people's story. Right. Because, you know, the Lord, we use whatever, you know, he's, whatever. whatever it takes. So now we're going to get into your book a little bit, but I'm just looking at the subtitle here. It says how to find joy when the life you have is not the live you, life you had hoped for. Is that kind of. And I don't want to jump too far ahead, but is that kind of where you're going with that too? Like, you know, when life throws you curveballs and things don't go as you hoped it would go, was that kind of the, you know, the reason why you wrote the book? Yeah, and, and we'll talk about it, you know, just a mix of ministry experiences and trying to minister to people who that's what they're dealing with. You can't give them the sugary sweet answers. You need to give them something really substantive. But then this own choice within my own life to say, you know what, I'm going to thrive. I'm really going to thrive no matter what's thrown my way. And so that out of that, both those places, the birth, the birth of the book came. Good. Well, again, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so I remember when you and I had a conversation and we talked and I told you about the webinar and, you know, this platform for for women and you yeah. seem pretty excited about it. Can you tell us, you know, why do you think a platform like this where it, it, it highlights women, what they're doing, you know, their stories? Um, you know, why, why did you think that was important and why did you want to be a part of it? So, you know, I think highlighting and elevating the voices of women is something that's super, super important. Um, one, that women get to see other women who study the Bible and study it deeply a lot of time. Representation matters. Mm -hmm. And so that you get to see your, um, someone who looks like you, someone who's gone through similar experiences, and that you get to understand the Bible through their lens. And so to me, a lot of times, the voices that we will listen to or that are easily accessible, I think that's a term I like to use, is that women have always been um, at the forefront of Christianity and the forefront of discipleship. 
but their voices haven't always been the ones that are easily accessible. Mm. And so that you are bringing those voices to the forefront that we can learn from, that you can learn new things from. And so to me, it's just, my life has been transformed so much by the women who have just mentored me either in person or from my shelves. Mm -hmm. And to be a part of that, but also to see again, that you're elevating, making those resources available so that we can learn what it means for us to be men and women of God through the lens of women. Now that, that's, that's really helpful too for, for those who are watching and, and something you said that was really important, all of it was, it was important, but you specifically said that representation you know, isn't is important. And I think that, you know, in my experiences, I'm, I'm sure it may be similar for you, is that people sometimes have a difficult time understanding what we say by representation matters. Um, you know, for me, you know, in my role as a national presenter for Logos, you know, I travel and it's all I do is I speak on stage showing Logos and, and demonstrating all that it can do. And we'll get to some of that as well. But I'll, I'll be at, let's say, an African-American conference and someone will come up to me and say, thank you for being here. You know, I'm so glad that we have someone who looks like me or looks like us doing what you you do. And I've mentioned that to some of my, you know, non-African American friends, and sometimes they don't get it. Like, well, you, you're presenting logos. It's the same whether or not, you know, you're black or white or what have you, but it's different. I don't know if you want to expound on that, you know, as far as why that's so important. You know, there are just the rooms in which uh, decisions get made in terms of like, how does our church do discipleship? How is our church going to help people grow? And you think about a lot of times those rooms, women are not at the table. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to what we think is normative in how we grow in our faith, how we study the Bible, by you bringing women to the table, it says that women get to be a part of that conversation and shape what discipleship looks like for the church. Um, and to me, as a, I get so encouraged when I see other African-American women, when I see other women in a place, it gives me the hope that, oh, I can do this too, mm -hmm. um, that this place, I belong here. Because sometimes you'll walk into a place and because you're not there, present there, you're like, I don't belong here. This mm -hmm. isn't for me. So studying the Bible deeply isn't for me. Learning the Greek and Hebrew isn't for me. Going to seminary isn't for me because I don't see people like me do it. And then when you see someone like you, you're like, oh, I can do this and I can overcome this hurdle. And so in one, it provides opportunities for your voice to be brought to the table and in influencing significant decisions. But it also just gives you kind of this boost of confidence because someone has gone down that road before you. Yeah. And, you know, talking about influencing other women, I mean, you, you, you are one of those people and, um, and, and, and that's why I was so glad to have you on to be able to talk about, you know, what you're doing. And, and we're going to also get into how you do it, how you study. Yeah. But you've been on staff at what Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship. You've been um, at uh, the Village Church, uh, you know, preaching and or, or, or teaching. Um, what what you know, what do you have going on? What's what's coming up now? And tell me about, you know, your your many. What are you focusing on? I know you got a lot of irons in the fire, but if you could <laughs> share share what's going on. Yeah, I am passionate about helping people take the next step in their spiritual growth. And so, you know, sometimes I feel like people don't know how to take that next step. They feel overwhelmed by all the resources available to them. And I want to help take what I've learned both at Oak Cliff and what I've learned at the village to really say, this is the doorway to the deeper things of God. This is what your Bible says. These are basic beliefs we have as a Christian. This is what it means for us to be formed on a daily basis and really think critically about our faith in our current cultural moment. And so I wanna provide curriculum and books and training seminars to really come alongside people, whether it's the church as a whole, a local church in a specific community, or just individuals. People are hungry and they're thirsty. And I just wanna be able to take them down the journey and guide them to some really wonderful places in this, this journey of spiritual formation that we're on. And so just in a season where I just wanna meet lots of different people and, and be all across the United States, um, and learning about the diversity of the body of Christ uh, here on stateside, but just really helping people grow in their relationship with the Lord, grow deeply because the world is needing Christians to show up with the gospel, with the truth of transformation. And I wanna help people be able to get there. Well, one of the, the adjectives that I've heard describing you in terms of your, uh, your, your teaching is the word gifted. And, um, 
And, and so with that in mind, and I totally agree with that too, by the way, what, what's kind of, what's your, your, let's go to the day to day, you know, in terms of your Bible yeah. study or your devotional yeah. time, like, you know, what's a typical day in the life of Elizabeth Woodson look like in terms of, you know, your, your devotion time or Bible study. And we're going to get into how you actually use those tools, but what's typically yeah. a day in the life look like for you in terms of study? A typical day in the life for me um, is me wanting to get in the word every day. And really, I, I use specific language about rehearsing the story, rehearsing the biblical story, um, because to me, that's just an easy way for me to get my arm around what we do when we read through scripture. We're reminding ourselves of truth every day. Mm -hmm. And so I'll listen to the audio Bible. And so I will get up in the morning, wash my face and, and, <laughs> and plug my earbuds in to my iPhone. And I'll just sit and I'll listen. Um, and I might be doing stuff around my apartment or I will um, just be sitting at my kitchen table with my Bible open and just reading along with what I'm hearing mm -hmm. um, because just hearing it auto through the audio version is just really helpful for me. And then I will, after I've listened to that day's uh, reading, I will just journal. What has the Holy Spirit brought out of the text um, to my attention? What is it reminding me about the character of God? Like, who am I called to be in that moment? Is there something I need to confess or repent? Just need to be in awe of who God is and just taking time to journal through that and pray. And to me, that regular habit of being in the word, whether it is something that might evoke uh, a well of emotions and something that maybe not like it's we're in it and the discipline of doing it because we need to remind ourselves every day of who God is. And then if I want to do a deeper dive, which most of the time happens uh, <laughs> because of what I do, I like to print out the text. And so I will mm. print out a passage and I'll double space it and have 14 size font <laughs> so I can go through and annotate the text. And so mm. what I'm going to do is I'm going to read through, I'm going to circle words that stand out to me, circle things that I don't understand, repeated words. Um, transitional phrases, all the things that we learn in um, observation, interpretation, application technique, and to be able to go through and prepare whatever lesson that I am trying to use that passage for. And then I'm going to use some of my online tools to be able to help me do a deeper dive in some of the other things. First. But I like to start with the text before I start bringing in other voices, which are needed, but I want to start with the text before I do those things. Wow. So that's a good regimen for people who, um, you know, like, man, I want to study. I want to, you know, get involved with, with the word, but I don't know where to start. And I like what you say, you just pop in some earbuds and just listen yeah. to it, you know, just listen. Yeah. And, uh, that's, that's a really, really good practice. And, you know, one that want to kind of transition into logos, because I know you're a logos user. And yeah. um, so this is the third women in a word that I've done. And I'm, this is the third time I'm going to say it again. The, the use of logos was not a stipulation for anyone to be on this webinar. I promise you all it was not. But as I talked to people like Elizabeth and I said, hey, you know, do you use logos? Because I didn't know. And you're like, oh, yeah, I love it. And you, so I'm like, mm -hmm. OK, well, my original intent was let me pull up logos and show how you know it can be used. And then I say, well, hey, Elizabeth, do you mind showing, you know, how you use it yourself? So it's just, you know, it's just God at work. That was not the plan for everyone to, to, to use logos, but it just happens to be that everyone I've talked to so far, that's the case. So you mentioned logos. So can you tell us, you know, how do you use it? Maybe what's your routine like? What are some of your, your favorite features? I'm just going to turn it over to you and let you just do your thing with logos. <laughs> Yeah, with logos, uh, to me, I appreciate the fact that I get to have a library of books that are not breaking my back <laughs> that I can use <laughs> on my computer. I use it on my phone. I use it on my iPad. And so to me, just the flexibility of access is really important. Um, and so on a, on a just really basic level, I just use commentaries. And so just trying to see if I'm looking up a particular passage, if I'm working on teaching for that week, that I get to access different commentaries to help me dig through um, some of the information, you know, just cultural information, because we know looking up the background is really important, but we may not always have the real tools readily available to do that. And so through Logos, I'll have like a Bible dictionary, or maybe there'll be a map that's provided. Um, and so there are a couple of different features that I really like, and I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Um, and and while you pull that up, let me, let me just say, uh, Elizabeth has mentioned her phone, her iPad, um, you can also get logos installed on um, your computer. And so there's many different ways you can access logos. And what I um, 
love hearing is that you actually use the web version of Logo. So not the actual mm -hmm. one that's installed on your laptop, um, but you use the, the web version as well as the iPad. So that's good to know. So for those of you who may be thinking, well, I don't have this high powered computer or I don't have you know a ton of memory, well, you can access it from the web and use it just like you're about to see. So what, man, what's this colorful stuff you have? I mean, I know, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, um, this is one of the tools actually, we did a Psalm study at the village uh, a couple of, uh, probably I think a year or two ago. And this was actually really helpful. I think this is a cool tool. There are some others I use on a more regular basis, but this is a cool one for me um, because this is a Psalms Explorer. And so it just has a lot of comprehensive information about the book of Psalms. You see just different genres of lament. And so even uh, this particular middle screen, um, let's see, is it gonna, okay, there we go. Um, that you just get to see the different psalms separated by genre. Um, and this was really helpful as we were trying to build a study, but even as I'm going through in my own personal time and I wanna know uh, what, what psalms fall underneath the category of lament that I can see that all together. And there's other ways that it's categorized, but this was just really helpful for me um, during my study. But something that I will use, um, and I think it is, the exegetical guide. Mm -hmm. And so this just helps me dig deep into a particular passage. Um, and so I'm able to get a word by word of the Greek and Hebrew. And you don't need to always, I always like tell people, you don't need to have an understanding of the Greek and Hebrew to benefit from Lagos or just to study the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, some people can feel over really overwhelmed by that. Um, but this helps me just do to dig into that particular um, benefit in the program for um, August. And then gee, the fact book um, has also been really helpful. And so again, this just cute, aggregates uh, a lot of different information that's in Logos and the different resources and different books. And it puts them all together for one particular topic. And so something that I have, a question I have tried to answer for many years is, okay, I'm reading a particular topic in the Bible, where else is it talked about? Mm. Um, or how can I find more information? And so what I like is that I don't have to go searching for a bunch of different things, that uh, the different tools like the fact book can bring them all together for me. So we have some historical background and we have some media. Again, key passages, where else is it talked about in scripture? And so those are some of the things I use on a regular basis of where is this particular topic or theme present throughout the entirety of scripture? So I can make sure that what I'm saying is consistent through the entirety of the Bible and not just for one particular passage. But those are just a few things within an, in addition to commentaries or different Bible translations that have been really helpful for me. You know, one thing I'll point out, you have the fact book open. And when, uh, you know, when I do stage presentations and I, I, I always show fact book now. And one of the things I highlight about it is that Typically, you know, if you ask people, you know, where do you get your, you know, those who don't use logos, you know, where do you get your theological information from? And overwhelmingly, people say Google. So they do, you know, Google searches and I always say, you know, Google is great if you want to, you know, find out, you know, addresses or, you know, scores to ball games. But I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for your theological, you know, research because you just don't know where it comes from. Well, that's where fact book really shines because you can, as you said, you can just type in like you have on the screen now, temple, click a button and it pulls it up. So we, we jokingly call it Christian Google, um, okay. but <laughs> but this is this is the place to go. So good. I'm glad I'm glad to hear you use it that way. Okay, so I'll stop my share. Well, good. So, um, and that's great. And, and, and let me just pause here to say that uh, for those of you who are watching and you're you know hearing about Logos, you obviously knew that this was brought to you by Logos Bible Software. You may be thinking, man, you know, how can I get my hands on a tool similar to what, or the same tool, I should say, 
that Elizabeth Woodson uses and other women who um, teach the Bible and study the Bible. Uh, you can go to logos.com slash W-I-W for women in the word. So logos.com slash W-I-W. Uh, it has all of the different options there. Uh, you actually even get a 15% discount for being a participant or viewer of women in the word. Uh, and, and you're going to see a lot of different options. And, you know, you're going to see some of the lower uh, library, lower meaning not as many resources all the way up to some for someone who's going through, you know, their doctoral program. And so I would say if you're not sure, you know, where to start, I would recommend somewhere probably the bronze or the silver if you are you know, wanting to get the Greek and Hebrew, silver would be the one for that. All the different commentaries that Elizabeth is talking about. And if you're in ministry or you do, you know, Bible teaching and whatnot, you want to look at the gold. If you're looking at seminary or looking to go to seminary or already in seminary, platinum is um, where you want to be. If someone's doing some full-time pastoring or want to study at that level, that's where the diamond comes in. So uh, again, hopefully with that range, that gives you an idea of where you would want to kind of concentrate on if you, you know, want to uh, get something like Logos that Elizabeth uh, swears by, and I do too. Um, so uh, let's, let's, let's transition to your book. And uh, yeah. one of the other reasons I'm really excited about having you on is your new book launched today. Yeah, I mean, today. today. Now, have you had any other interviews today? I know you had one yesterday. Any I haven't. This is my oh. only interview today. I'm, I feel so special. The book <laughs> release. You, you, you get it here. The official launch of the new book today. And the book is right here. And yes, this is my wife's copy. I told you she like she's like Elizabeth Woodson fan club member number one. Um, <laughs> book came in today. It's called Embrace Your Life, How to Find Joy with the Life you have, or when, when the life you have is not the life you hope for. So uh, this is it. This is, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Tell us about the yeah. book. What was the reason you wrote it? What do you hope women will get out of it? Uh, can men read it too? Or, you know, tell us all about the book. The book is for everybody. <laughs> okay. um, so men, women, I tell people, I talk a lot about my journey as a single, never married, but it's not a book about singleness. It is okay. a book about longing. And so I believe that we all have this gap between the life that we want and the life that we have. And it really is a book for people who, and they've Googled all the answers for the problems that they're dealing with, whether mm. it's financial difficulty, whether it's a chronic illness, whether it's a hard marriage, whether it's just, life's just disappointing. It's not something mm. really big. It's something small, but it's this nagging feeling that I don't want this. I don't want what I have. Um, and what you have is not going to be taken away from you anytime soon. And so the question is, how do I live with that and not just survive and live through life, but how do I really thrive? And in ministry, I would just meet two different types of people. I would meet people who would get stuck, mm. like they would just be on this replay tape of what was going on in their life that they didn't like, that they were, that they were rehearsing what happened 5, 10, 15 years ago, and they hadn't really moved past it. And then I would meet people who, you know, were dealing with some really significant things and they were thriving. Like they were choosing to take a hold of their life and really run after the things that God had for them. And so what I want to do in this book, or what I hope to do is give people some really practical tools that's built on scriptural truth. Like let's dig down deep. Um, I go through the story of Joshua and just really go through these series of six spiritual disciplines that we see in his life and how we can use them in our own lives to deal with what will always be here because we live in a fallen world. But really to say, God has given me something beautiful and as long as there is breath in my body, there is a life for me to live. And how can I show up for that life every day, grieve the things I feel like I have lost and live on faith while remembering who God is. And so I tell a lot of my stories. I try to be transparent and vulnerable to invite people into the conversation. But really it's a book that you can pull off a shelf in any season of life um, to say, okay, I don't want what I have. How am I gonna live with it today? How am I gonna cultivate joy and hope and faith? and really say, God, you've given me a gift in the life I have. How can I honor it and honor you in that place too? And I, I, you know, once I steal it away from my wife, I will, I will <laughs> read it as well. <laughs> but uh, as you were writing it, um, did, did anything just kind of come up unexpectedly? I know you probably had some things in mind that, you know, hey, I'm going to write this book and it's going to flow this way. Were there any like aha moments that came about as you were writing this book? Yeah, you know, I think the first, um, 
going through the, the life of Joshua and you read those first few verses of Joshua and God basically says, Moses is dead. I'm going to need you to get it. <laughs> and you feel like it's this really insensitive thing. Um, and you just turn a couple of pages before and it wasn't a connection I had made before was how God gave Israel time to mourn and grieve Joshua's death. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, how do I deal with this stuff? And I was like, well, first you got to grieve it. Like, I think sometimes we tell people to move on mm-hmm. and we tell people just stuff it down or just get past it or just be busy. And it is let's honor the things we feel we've lost and scripture provides space for that. And so that was a connection that I had not made previously. Mm-hmm. And just in my study and trying to say, OK, Lord, I know you're not an insensitive guy. I know mm-hmm. you care. <laughs> I know that you are a caring and compassionate God and seeing, oh, this is a space you've given him for it um, to really honor the life of Moses as you are calling him to move on to other things. Yeah, that it, there's so many people who, um, you know, just hearing you talk about it, you know, just, you know, you just look at the world today and just the different trials and of course pandemic, which is still kind of hanging around and, uh, you know, like you said, marriage stuff and health stuff and, you know, it's, it, it's tough. Sometimes it's easy just to kind of just, you know, throw in the towel and uh, I, I love the fact that you have given people a resource. Obviously, the Bible is the number one resource, but you've given an additional tool uh, and a title, Embrace Your Life, despite um, you know, what is going on. Uh, who knew? Pandemic two years ago, you know, you talk, I'm looking, again, looking at the title, when the life um, is not what you hope for. You know, who, yeah. who knew? Who knew people were going to lose their right. jobs as a result of a pandemic? Who knew we were going to lose friends their lives have been lost as a result of the pandemic and um and i'm just again i'm just excited that you have used your gift to uh give resources and and tools and mission accomplished and there's still more work to be done uh by you and speaking of that uh i know you have something coming up in the fall uh so can you give us i know i know today is all about the book but can you give us a sneak preview of what's coming up in the fall (laughs) Yeah, in the fall, I have a Bible study coming out through Lifeway called From Beginning to Forever, a study on the grand narrative of scripture. And so I take people through the Bible. Like, what is the Bible saying? It's not just 66 small books. It is one unified story from Genesis to Revelation. And we walk through that um, in eight different sessions. And so it's just really fun because it is that story that tells us how to show up for the world and tells us who God is and tells us who we are. And so I love the story of scripture. I love helping people see the beauty that's between the pages of their Bible and just giving them, again, I'm big on giving people tools. Like, Mm. how do we do this? How do I study my Bible? How do I understand what it's talking about? And so that's what I will do in that study. And I'm excited for that one to hit the shelves too. Wow. So that's going to be what a video study with like a workbook that goes along with it. Yep, video study with the workbook, and it releases in October. In October. All right. Well, we, we may have to have you back in October, if, if that's okay, yeah. to, to talk about that and, um, and, and hear more about that particular tool. And uh, speaking again, using that gift, I know you have a couple of speaking engagements coming up. Uh, shameless plug for my church in Frisco. There's a women's conference coming up, a women's retreat. Uh, Grace Church Frisco. So if any of the ladies from Grace Church, yes, it gave you a shout out. Um, now that is the registration is closed for that, but you are speaking at the women's retreat coming up yeah. soon uh, at Grace Church Frisco. But you are also speaking in June. Uh, you want to tell us about that? The Gospel Coalition. Now, the Gospel Coalition Women's Conference. I'm speaking in June in Indianapolis. Woo woo. Uh, Indianapolis is where I'm from so it's a a fun uh, shout out to give and so I'll just be doing a couple different sessions um, some with Jen Wilkin some on my own and I will be talking about uh, teaching for retention we'll be talking about honoring God with your with your money and so a little financial stewardship and then talking about my book embrace your life so doing a whole session walking through that book with folks Wow. So if you're in in Indianapolis or you want to go to Indianapolis in June for TGC, uh, you'll be able to see Elizabeth there. And uh, so I just want to, if I could, just kind of summarize some of the things that you talked about. You you, you, you use the word tools many times. right? So we're talking about logos um, as a tool, your book, your video series that's coming out. You've schooled us on the art of uh, putting in uh, 
earphones and, and listening to the word every day. That's an easy one. That's really, you know, that's no excuse for that. We, we have no excuse. We don't even have to look at it. We can just put it in, press play, <laughs> listen to the word and keep it moving. Um, now, you know, that was a different tool you get, you know, you, you know, a 14 point font and, you know, blow it up and take notes or print it out. So Elizabeth went even old school on it. She actually printed out some stuff and, uh, and, and journal with that. So you mentioned journaling. So I think uh, everyone who's, you know, tuned in uh, has gotten a, a, a ton of different tools to be able to capitalize on that uh, Elizabeth has brought in. So with that said, kind of concluding remark, uh, are there some things that you would want to share just to encourage women uh, who may be, whether or not they're kind of stale in their study or in, in their walk or kind of stuck? What are some kind of final concluding words of encouragement you can offer the ladies to, today? Uh, um, I would offer people just the encouragement that the, the goal is that we keep going and not that we reach some type of end destination. Mm. Um, the study of God's word is a is an end we'll never reach, the depths we will never be able to fully mine, and that we would just commit ourselves to the journey, not being overwhelmed by all the things and all the books and all the things that other people are doing, but that you just commit yourself to show up uh, with the Lord every day to study him and to read different people, switch it up. Sometimes mm -hmm. we do something different. You know, Maybe you need to switch up to a different translation or switch up to a different tool because you feel like it's gotten a little stale um, but that you would just always be learning and know that that learning process is a journey and a journey is just one step at a time. That's awesome. That's awesome. And so for people who want to get more, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, like social media sites, uh, where, where can they find more about Elizabeth Woodson if they wanted to? Two main places. One is my website. So it is elizabethwoodson.org. And the other one is on social media. It is at Miss Jazzy Liz, M-I-S-S-J-A-Z-Z-Y-L-I-Z. -Z -Z Jazzy Liz, Miss Jazzy Liz. All right, go follow her, uh, go to the website, get the book, uh, get logos, go to logos.com slash W-I-W, take advantage of that 15% discount. Then the next time we have Elizabeth on, we'll, maybe some folks will write in and email in and talk about how they use the same tool that you did, especially at Psalms Explorer. That thing, that, that's awesome. So thank exactly. you for sharing that. And thank you for being uh, a part of Women of the Word. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Uh, and we're going to have you back. If you're okay, we're going to have you back in oh, October. Oh, yeah, I love that. All right, you all heard it. She's coming back in October. <laughs> so again, Elizabeth, thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, you taking time out of your day today to talk with us. And um, thank you all for joining in. And we'll stay tuned for the next Women in the Word coming to you in the next week or so. All right, thank you. Have a good day.